So everybody is on their own DNI journey. We're we're all coming at this from our own um, identities, from our own perspective. I think about myself, right? You know, I'm an African American woman, but I'm also a wife and mother. I am the mother of a child who's on the autism spectrum. Um, I am a first gen college student. I bring all those identities into my work. Um, which helps to lend voice to the various perspectives when I'm trying to gain buy-in across the business. So for us, it's really been about, number one, understanding the business priorities. You want to make sure that DNI is integrated into every, every fabric of your business strategy. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the All Inclusive Podcast. On today's episode, I'm joined by Sean abner Pinnell. Chief Diversity Officer at South Jersey Industries. In this episode, Sean and I discuss the benefits of DEI for businesses, how to measure the success of DEI programs, and Sean shares how she finds the balance between her work and home life to avoid the burnout. As always, before jumping into the video, make sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on your notification bell, and follow on your favorite podcast platform so that you never miss an episode. That being said, let's jump in. Hi, Sean. Hi, Natasha. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really excited about this conversation. Um, so let's kick things off. Tell our listeners a little bit about you and your journey to where you are today. Yeah, thank you for that. And thanks so much for having me on All Inclusive uh, Podcast. So a little bit about me. I'm Sean Abner Purnell. I currently serve as the first uh, CDO, Chief Diversity Officer for South Jersey Industries, but I didn't start out my career in uh, DEI. I actually started out my career. I spent most of my career in the insurance industry, where um, earlier in my career I spent roles in both risk management and claims management before transitioning to a role in HR. Um, and it was there where I really started to get my feet wet in DEI with things like um, anti harassment training, which was, you know, uh, for the most part, just compliance related DEI work. Um, in 2016, I joined SJI, and I actually joined during a period of high growth. Um, our CEO was uh, fairly new in his role, and um, for him, it was important that we started to truly create this culture of inclusion and belonging for our workforce. So um, I originally joined the organization to help build out our organizational development and talent function. Um, from there, I transitioned to a role and uh, director of organizational development and DNI. A few years later, I was promoted to vice president of DNI and engagement. And then last year I was promoted to uh, my current role um, of CDO, where I oversee both uh, DNI across the organization, working with and through our diversity council and business leaders, and also our, um, our talent functions. Oh. So that's a little bit about me and my journey. In addition to that, I don't want to forget you know the other important part of my role which is wife and, and mother of three young adults oh yeah no we can't forget about those those extra roles either <laughs> they won't let us anyway <laughs> um so uh, congratulations on on kind of moving to to chief diversity officer at cji that's amazing um so through your experience um working in diversity equity inclusion what have you seen the impact of the initiatives and programs had on the business? Mm -hmm. So the impact for us has been like a lot of companies, it's been incremental, right? So I always joke that, you know, five, six years ago, I couldn't say the word diversity without people getting visibly um, uncomfortable, right? So we've grown past that. We've done the hard work of having both listening sessions and courageous conversations. Um, and really educating our workforce. And our journey isn't done. We're still on that journey. But some of the impact we've seen is really um, sentiments around and feelings of inclusion and belonging have increased. Um, again, there are still some gaps in certain demographics, but again, we're doing the hard work there to really start to um, improve. But we've also increased our brand. You know, when you think about who we are as an energy infrastructure company, right? We are in a, um, our industry tends to be more male and predominantly white. Um, and we know that, right? Um, we, we know that that's one of the um, challenges in our industry, but we know that talent coming into the, um, into workforces today, they're looking for something a little bit differently. So for us, you know, we're really proud of the work we've done to truly start to create this culture of inclusion where everybody feels like they have a voice. 
um, and they belong. Again, that's not to say that our work is done. We're still on that journey, but we're starting to see the, the benefits of the work that we're all putting in together. Oh, that's fantastic. And so for you, what do you, what do you see successful DEI looking like? So if, if you've got an organization, they've, they've, they've started up with diversity, equity, inclusion, what does, Mm -hmm. what does a successful kind of DEI equitable, diverse company look like? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, thank you for that question. That that's another great question. I think success looks different for every company. I mean, I always say there's no one size fits all because it's really going to depend on when you're looking at DEI from a for-profit company, right? It's very different than a nonprofit company, right? You know, in nonprofits, there's there's more leeway to really focus on uh, things like social justice and the like because you don't necessarily have um, your stakeholders are different. When you're in a publicly traded company or a privately traded company, you know, your efforts are tend to look different. So again, success looks different in every organization, but for us. We look at it from both a qualitative and quantitative standpoint. So we've identified some key performance indicators that tell us whether or not we're making progress in our journey. Um, And we we evaluate those key performance indicators, right? Because again, um, we're still on this journey of becoming um, an employer of choice. That's important for us to make our way to, to one day become, you know, recognize outside of SJI as become an employer of choice. So um, again, it's really taking a look at those KPIs, identifying the KPIs that really tell you and your business that you're on the right path, you're doing the right, you're doing the hard work to close the gaps, um, and that employee sentiments match what you're seeing in the data. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And so for you, what's been um, a, a tool or resource that you've used that's really allowed you to help get those KPIs? hmm so I think external research. So, you know, there are a lot of DNI practitioners. There are, I'll say there are, you know, although DNI is a newer concept and this uh, role of CDO is definitely new within the past five to 10 years, right? We see these roles, um, they're more prevalent than they were five to 10 years ago, but um, these roles have existed. They look different 20, 30 years ago. Um, but again, for us, it's really about measuring um, the gaps in our culture, identifying what's going to be important to help integrate DE&I into the fabric of our culture. But it's also about identifying um, our opportunity areas and what we need to do as a culture to really help to close those gaps. So for instance, we, um, every two years, we do an engagement survey and our engagement survey includes questions around inclusion and belonging because we, we want to understand, you know, what our employees are thinking, how they're feeling, whether or not the strategies and initiatives we're putting in place work for them. Um, but we also see it also in things like our attrition rates, right? So we're looking at things like not just attrition at um, in its pure sense, but more importantly, as people leave the organization, what are the reasons for leaving? Are there things that we could have done differently to, to both um, keep talent, right? Because they're there's a lot, a huge investment that goes into attracting talent. So as you attract talent, you want to be sure that your culture can survive um, that difference. So again, it's really about understanding the KPIs that are important to you and your business, uh, measuring those KPIs, and then evaluating and tweaking those KPIs as you grow and mature. Mm. And so what does your kind of team look like? You know, that's uh, another great question. Our team is really, really small, which is why it's important to work with and across the business. Like you'll, you'll hear me say all the time that D and I, even though I sit in the role in the space of chief diversity officer um, to help lead the strategy throughout the organization, um, this isn't work that I can do alone. It's not work that anybody can do alone. So um, I have a full-time dedicated resource who is absolutely amazing, um, who helps partner with me to do this work. But we also have a great Diversity Council, right? Who helps to really champion our DNI strategy across the organization. And most of the folks that sit on our diversity council are also executive leaders with, you know, throughout the business. So they, you know, they also have a seat at the table in their respective parts of the business to really help to drive the strategy. Um, but then our business leaders, and I don't want to forget our business leaders because they have been key partners with us in this work 
to help drive our success over the past few, few years. And so what has been the most, what have you found has been the most effective way to bring those sorts of people on board? Because mm-hmm. it's great to hear that you have them, but yeah. for, for many people, they don't have them just yet. They don't have those mm-hmm. those key stakeholders. Um, so yeah. what would you say is an effective way to get them on board? I think education, right? So everybody is on their own DNI journey. We're we're all coming at this from our own um, identities, from our own perspective. I think about myself, right? You know, I'm an African American woman, but I'm also a wife and mother. I am the mother of a child who's on the autism spectrum. Um, I am a first gen college student. I bring all those identities into my work. Um, which helps to lend voice to the various perspectives when I'm trying to gain buy-in across the business. So for us, it's really been about, number one, understanding the business priorities. You want to make sure that DNI is integrated into every every fabric of your business strategy. And that's not easy, right? And um, I don't want anybody to think that that's, you know, something that we figured out fully. That's a journey we're still on. But for me, what I found is having a an awareness of the business strategy helps me to truly integrate um, DNI and how it can help in the business strategy of the organization so that when I am working with leaders, you know, I am coming at it from a business perspective and also helping them to identify how we can work collaboratively to truly drive DNI throughout the business in alignment with the strategies that we um, that we put forth. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Thanks so much for that, Sean. And what I would like to hear from you is that you've just kind of explained a little bit about your own kind of personal ident- identity. Um, mm-hmm. You're a mother. You, you've also got a child that is um, on, on the spectrum with autism. What would you, how do you, I mean, being a chief diversity officer is, mm-hmm. is a lot of work as well. So how do you find the balance between the two? Mm-hmm. It's hard. I will say it is hard, but one of the things that I do, I'm not one for uh, New Year's resolutions, but what I do every year is a reset. And that reset for me is a life reset. I take a look at all components of my life to determine where I am versus where I'm looking to go. Um, And I'll be honest, you know, those of us that do this work, I mean, there is a, there are high levels of burnout, which is why you typically see CDOs in this role for only a few years, because you do tend to to get by, uh, burnt out. Um, so for me, at the end of last year, I realized that I needed to take stock of where I was, um, both emotionally, both f- physically and spiritually. Um, so my reset was really around putting the focus on my own self-care, right, first, and, and not feeling guilty about it. Um, you know, so for, for anybody who's ever flown, you always hear like the flight attendant talk about, you know, in order to help others, you need to put on your own oxygen mask. So for me, that self-care for myself is really about giving myself permission to put on that oxygen mask so that I can continue to do the work um, that I am being, um, you know, charged with doing and do it well. We're going to take a minute to thank our friends at Dandy, the DEI analytics company for supporting the show. To drive real change today, DEI leaders need to be strategic and they need to be data driven. That's why today's most successful DEI leaders use Dandy to measure and manage their DEI programs in real time, track key DEI metrics and create reports at a push of a button. Are you ready to join the DEI measurement movement? Click the link in the description below to download your free essential guide to data-driven DEI transformation. And surrounding yourself with others who can pour into you, right? So uh, surrounding yourself with others who do this work um, so that you can network, you can identify best practices, you can talk about challenges, um, and then making sure you surround yourself with a tribe that supports you. Mm, no, definitely. I I am one for, for tribes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> definitely, like, I think I didn't really understand their significance I think until I entered motherhood so that was my Mm -hmm. first real taster of like the importance of having um a community whether it be actually direct family or or not kind of having that kind of tribe of people which you can lean on and and can share some of those the struggles with 
um can can really be beneficial and what's the what's the saying a problem halved is a problem no a problem shared is a problem halved right mm -hmm. uh, and I really think that is it that can be carried forward in in anything and especially in working in DEI as well because it, it can be quite a lot of heavy load to to bear um thank you so much uh for joining me sean on, on this podcast i think you you've really shared like some really great insights um to our listeners um be, before you go there are a couple of things that i still want to i want to know about you okay <laughs> so you've gone from you you've, you've mentioned that the industry that you're in is, is predominantly male and it's also white male and so as a woman of color that has kind of climbed through the ranks and mm -hmm. is now sitting in in a senior role and is really kind of at the forefront of change in an organization um how do you feel what do you think has helped you the most along your journey mm -hmm. I think for me what's helped is you know folks talk a lot about hard work I think hard work is only part of it uh making myself visible uh being available when there were business problems to be solved um, but, but I wouldn't be in this place without the sponsors that have helped me to get where I am, right? So they weren't sponsors that I even necessarily knew were sponsoring me, but they were folks who had a voice, who had a seat at the table, who kind of brought me along with them. You know, they recognized my value. They recognized um, where there were business problems that my skill sets could help solve. Um, and that's truly helped me to um, excel and, and do what, what I've been called to do. Mm, fantastic I think that's great and um it's it, it's an important element I think there's there's a difference between mentoring and sponsorship but both mm -hmm. are, are just as integral in in really being able to to allow others to thrive through when they're faced with with barriers which we already know that that do unfortunately exist but yeah I think um I think it's great that you guys have recognized that and and are, have kind of implemented that in in your initiatives and programs at the organization um yes. So, Sean, once again, I mean, I've really enjoyed our conversation today. Uh, for any of our listeners, if they do want to reach out and connect with you, how can they? Uh, they can reach me on on LinkedIn. I am um, on LinkedIn at uh, Sean Abner Purnell at South Jersey Industries. Um, and I would say that's for business purposes. That's typically the platform that I use. Great, that's perfect. So I will have a link down below of the episode, which will people can connect with you on LinkedIn. Um, and for anyone that is uh, listening already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and follow on all our social media platforms so you don't miss anything that's been spoken about today or with any of the leaders that we do speak with. But once again, Sean, thank you so much for joining me. I wish you all the best in the future. Thank you again for having me, Natasha. This has been great. And, you know, I'm so excited for, for people to hear your, your podcast and all the great work um, many of your listeners are doing um, in the DNI space.